Hello, San Cayetano Cheetahs. This is Miss Raber, your art teacher here. This week, you're going to explore how to use Google Drawing and play around with making art digitally on your computer. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to need to open your Google Drawing. For second through fifth grade, you have Google Classroom and your Google Drawing will be in the assignment for Google Classroom. So you just open it. For kinder through first grade, you need to go to your lesson plan and you'll click on the Google Drawing there, but you will need to make your own copy. Second through fifth graders, uh, Google Classroom automatically makes you your own copy, but not for kinder through first. So I'll show you how to make your own copy. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna click on file, make a copy, and you can name your copy with your own name. So I'll put C for my first name, Cassidy, uh, Raber, and then I can put a uh, drawing or digital drawing maybe. So this is one that I made just to kind of show you all the different things you can do. This week, you're not trying to make a finished piece. You're just trying to explore all the different tools and learn how to use them. Okay, uh, so I want you to try at least three, okay, if I can figure out where to put my fingers, three to five different of these techniques. Okay, so let's get going. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to add shapes. So you're going to go up here. There's a circle and a square. If you click on them, it says shape. And there's a lot of different kinds. There's shapes, arrows, callouts, equations. You can use whatever you like. Okay, so I'm going to just start with basic shapes. Pick something that you like. There's a smiley face and you click on the program. You drag it with your finger. If you have a mouse, it kind of you drag it with the mouse and then you release it. They keep adding different shapes, maybe a lightning bolt. So I click down and then I drag so I could keep it real small. I can drag it until it gets really big. OK. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is to color your shapes. So first, you need to select the shape you want to color. So if I want the smiley face, I need to click on that. If I want the lightning bolt, I need to click on that. And then up here at the top, it shows the paint can. It says fill color. Click on that and pick whatever color you would like. So lightning bolt, maybe yellow. But my smiley face, I don't know if I want yellow for my smiley face too. So maybe, maybe pink. Okay, so that's how you color your images. The next thing you can do is you can add lines. So right here, it says line. You click on it and there's lots of different kinds. So go ahead and explore. You can explore all of them because they're, they all do different things and they work differently. Like the polyline, you can use it to make a shape with straight sides. Okay, anything that you can think of. Um, there's another one called the curve and this one makes the shape with curved sides. The only thing you have to remember is to click down every time you want it to change direction. So click here maybe, and then curve it around. Click here, curve it around. Let's see if I can pull off making a heart. Not really, but I can try. Okay, <laughs> kind of a funny heart. All right, and then I can also do a line that doesn't connect. Like for instance, a scribble. I can click on that one. And I can kind of go up and down and around and twist and back. You could use this to write letters if you wanted to, to make a symbol. You can go on top of other things. Okay. And uh, the next thing that we're going to practice is how to add text. To add text, you hit insert. You click text box, and then again, you click where you want it, and you drag and pull. 
and release. So that's my text box. Now I can write whatever I want. Let's see. There are no mistakes in art. All right, so it's probably not big enough, so I can highlight it. Up here at the top, it has my font size. I can make it quite a bit bigger if I would like. Um, or smaller if I want it to fit in one line. And then I can make it bold. I can make it ita italicized. I can underline it. I can change the text color. Notice all of these functions are here in a row, so feel free to explore them. I can make it blue. I can put a background color behind it. Uh, let's see, maybe orange. Kind of strange. And then <laughs> I can also center it. So right now it says align. I click on that and I can put it in the center. I can make it longer so it fits on one line. I can, there's a fly. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is add an image. So to add an image, you can click insert, you can click image, and you can upload an image you already have on your computer if you have one you like. You could insert an image from your drive. You could insert um, an image from the photos that you take on your phone. Maybe you have Google Photos with pictures um, from your, uh, you could take a picture or you can search the web. So if you click on search the web, it does kind of limit what you can find, but sometimes you can find some good things. So let's see, what about a paw print? So you can click on paw print, and I kind of like that one. And you can add that to your design. Let's see. There is a way to get rid of the background on the paw print, so it's only the um, paw itself. So I'll create a mini video showing uh, that advanced technique if anybody wants to try it. Okay, so that's the paw print. And uh, let's see, so the next thing that we're going to do is to overlap things. So let's add another shape. So I'm going to go to insert, shape. And let's put a big rectangle in the back so that we have some color. So I'm gonna start in the corner and I'm gonna drag it all the way across my picture so that I don't have that white background, okay? Oh, but it covered everything. Well, first let's add the color that we want. So let's make this one green and then the um, put it in the background. So we'll hit Control, Shift, and the arrow key, the down button, makes it go all the way to the back. If you don't remember that, you can always right click. Let's right click, order, and send backward or to the back. I wanna send it to the very back. And now everything else is on top of it. Uh, let's see, another thing I can do is, um, put a gradient. So I, instead of having these be just one color, I can use a gradient. So let's change the green. So I click on fill color. Instead of solid, I click on gradient. And then if I don't like these colors, I can pick custom. So I don't see a pretty bright green that I like. So I'm going to click on custom. And this, these are my two shades. I've got a light gray and a dark gray. So I'm gonna click on the light gray, change that color to this lime green. And then what color could I change that light green into? So I can try a few different things and see what I like. Well, what would it look like if it was purple? Green to purple. It looks kind of neat on the edges. I'm not so sure about the middle. Let's see what it looks like. So I hit okay. And now I have a gradient. It goes from one shade to a very, one color to a different color. You can use two shades of the same color. You can use two different colors. You can do a few different things. Okay, now let me try the lightning bullet. So you have to select the thing that you want first, which I'm having trouble with apparently. Okay, now I've got the lightning bullet. 
So I can click again on color, click on gradient, and here's a few different gradients. So I'll try these first and see what I think. So that one looks kind of neat. It's got the dark on this both edges and the lighter color in the middle. So I think I'll leave that. I don't know if it fits well with the orange from the mistake, so I might have to change that color. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some borders. And then I'm going to be finished with my practice for today. So I select the um, face. I'm going to click border color. And for my face, I think I'd like a, like a dark purple border. And then you can't really see it. So I'm going to change the border weight. So I click on border weight. And I'm going to make it four point. So now you can see that line a little bit better. All right, um, I can also change it to a dash. I'm not sure what that would look like, but I can give it a try. Oh, that looks, it makes it look kind of like a sticker. So now I'm finished with my practice for today. So I need to either email it to my teacher if I'm a K first grade student, or I need to upload it to the Google Classroom. Okay, all right, well, I can't see, wait to see what you all make. Have a wonderful week. And I really hope that we're all back together very, very soon. I miss all of you very much. Have a wonderful week. Bye.